So we have two weeks to talk about the muscular system. We'll be focusing on skeletal muscle. And this week, we'll also be talking about how the nervous system signals the muscular system. So we're going to talk about um, similarities between muscle and nervous tissue, which we've talked about before. So excitable tissues um, and review some about our electrical signaling, um, electrical, electrochemical gradients. Then we'll go into skeletal muscle in a lot more detail. And we'll do that the next two weeks. Um, we will look at the nervous system um, in the future. And so that will then be more detail on the system that controls the skeletal muscle. Um, so I do wanna start with kind of like a big picture of how these two systems, so muscle system, um, but how it's controlled by nervous system, the nervous system. So think about how a painful stimulus can cause a response. Um, what can you, you know, figure out about how this happens, um, just at a, as a basic level. So this is a stimulus response pathway, um, and it's similar to what you've seen in a feedback loop, but it's not a feedback loop. So let's say um, we have a painful stimulus. That's what's going to start. So let's say like a pin prick, pin. This is not. There we go. That's our stimulus. And what's gonna happen when, when you get picked by, pricked by a pin? You're gonna have a reaction, right? You're gonna maybe um, pull away, um, move in response to that, have muscles contract. So we're gonna have a response over here be some sort of muscle contraction. Thoughts? You could do this for like the knee jerk reflex as well that that um, stretch, that hit to your knee causes um, a muscle contraction, a kick. So we're going to have something detect this pinprick, right? So a receptor, which I'm gonna do receptor up here. This type of receptor is actually called a nociceptor. So it's a pain receptor. And that's called the nociceptor. Um, I'm not gonna write that down because you don't need to know it yet. That pain receptor, this is the receptor or sensor, that's gonna cause a signal to be sent to the central nervous system. Um, that's gonna be sent via a sensory nerve. So sensory nerve is the input signal. We haven't seen input signals all the time because for endocrine, the sensory organ is the integrator. But an input signal is when you need to get the sensory signal to your integrator. Central nervous system is going to do some processing not going to go into detail on that. Sometimes it's very simple with the knee jerk reflex. It is just a one like synapse. And then we have an output signal. So our output si signal is going to be a motor nerve. It's our output. And what is that nerve going to contact? Well, a muscle. So depending on where that prick is, right? Um, usually we tend to move, withdraw from the pain. So let, we will say, let's say it's in the, the finger. Um, we might have muscles in the finger contract. So we'll put skeletal muscle because it is going to be skeletal. This is a conscious contraction. That is the target or effector it's what's going to have the effect. It's going to have the response. The response is that muscle contracts. So that is a stimulus response pathway. So how the peripheral nervous system and central nervous system control the response to some um, of an effector organ to some stimulus. Peripheral nervous system 
is going to be our input and output signal. That's our PNS. So this image looks a lot more complicated, but showing the same thing with some more detail. So this is the stimulus response pathway. And now we're showing um, still those same five components. So receptor, um, input signal, integrator, output signal, and then effector. There then would be a response of the effector and the stimulus, right, would stimulate the receptor. Um, so what's also shown here is some of the anatomy. So this is showing the sensory division of the peripheral nervous system. So I told you in the previous slide, this was a sensory neuron is signaling the information, the input. This is our input signal. And this is part of that peripheral nervous system. So nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system. So we have input. Um, this is our CNS. And then we've got motor output. So this is our output signal. This is also peripheral nervous system. Output. This is going to get more complicated then. Um, so first of all, we've got two different divisions of the nervous system. Um, structurally, we have central nervous system, oops, and peripheral nervous system. Back to my draw. So those are structural divisions. Then in terms of functional divisions, we've got sensory and motor divisions. We've also got the motor division that's broken up into somatic and autonomic. So these are both motor outputs, um, but somatic is going to be our consciously controlled, voluntary control of skeletal muscle. This is what we'll focus on this week. The autonomic nervous system is a whole other chapter we'll get back to. It's also called the visceral nervous system and it is um, involuntary. So we are not consciously controlling um, the effects of smooth muscles, like in our digestive system, glands, secretions, um, the heart muscle and fat that has, can um, have responses. These are controlled by the autonomic nervous system, still motor output, we don't have control over it consciously. These two different divisions, parasympathetic, Parasympathetic and sympathetic, we'll come back to later. Two different divisions of the autonomic nervous system. So we're gonna be focusing on the motor output in this chapter. And then most specifically, most of the time we'll spend on skeletal muscle. Um, but this is a chapter on muscles. So skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle are all part of the muscular system. Um, so one more intro topic is I wanna zoom into this motor control and look at how neurons contact um, and tell these structures what to do. So that was the next slide I accidentally went to before. So these are neurons that are talking to another structure. So that's what a synapse is. A synapse is when a neuron contacts or communicates with something else another neuron or some other target. Another. So three different things that neurons can um, synapse with. One is another neuron. So a neuron can, has this long axon, right? And then it has a junction to neuron two. We will talk about neuron to neuron communication when we get to the nervous system big topic. What that looks like zoomed in is this right here is a synapse. Neurotransmitter is released from neuron one and signals, is a chemical signal to neuron two. There are also neuromuscular junctions. So that's when a neuron 
contacts a skeletal muscle um, to cause it to contract. So this is what's gonna cause movement. This is gonna be the focus of this week, um, one of the focuses of this week um, in terms of how we get muscles to contract. And we will look at in detail at this, what's going on here, this action potential that causes neurotransmitter release from the neuromuscular junction and causes contraction of the skeletal muscle and then some type of movement. Um, and again, we'll use that, talk about skeletal muscles when we talk about that. Then there also could be neuroglandular synapses. Uh, we won't go into detail on these, but just to kind of be aware that neurons have to be able to signal other things too, um, to have motor output. So for example, endocrine glands, um, these would be gland cells that are then gonna release either some exocrine or endocrine messenger, but some chemical messenger that is signaled by this neuron telling it to signal. So another type of um, synapse. So really important to be able to think about how those neurons can, um, are communicating with other structures. Again, neuromuscular junction will be the focus of this week um, and synapses to other neurons will be a whole nother chapter coming up in a couple weeks.